Hey, welcome. Today we're going to be talking about how to set up your axes, so the x and the y axis, for graphs. Or you could say how to scale graphs well. So let me show you what I'm talking about. I've been a science teacher for many years and I've seen a lot of bad graphs over the years where if I give a student like a piece of paper like this, I end up with a graph of this size. And I just think it's probably because the student actually doesn't know how to scale the graph properly, doesn't understand how to make this work. And the problem with that is it's really hard to read what's going on with a smaller graph. Or conversely, you could say it's just easier to read with a larger graph what's going on. So you could also point out that there's just a bunch of dead space here and a bunch of dead space here. Similarly, there's a bunch of dead space over here. So this student knows how to scale in the y-axis or just got lucky with easy data. And similarly over here, the student knows how to scale on the x-axis, but not in the y. And so there's a bunch of dead space up here. Whereas this student does have their scale set up in a way that makes sense. Or again, they got really lucky and just got easy data to work with. But I want you to learn how to do this every time. So this is one method. I call it the division method in three steps. And I'm going to show you that today. There is one other method at least that I know of that you could do with this. But I think this is the easiest and most straightforward one to work with. But before I show you the exact division method, what I do want to do is talk about one more problem here so that you're aware of this. Sometimes people will have a break in the y-axis. They will start at like not zero in the y-axis or they'll start at zero and then they'll have a line that's a break. That's okay and that is acceptable in a lot of cases to do, but notice it can skew data if you do that. It's almost like zooming in in the y-axis when you do that. So for instance, if we were to plot the number of chinchilla zone and the average test scores for certain students, if you looked at the data like this, it might look like there's a causal or a correlational relationship where like, hey, the more chinchillas you own, the better you do on tests. But if you were to plot it out like this, where you start from zero, this is exactly the same data. You can notice that there really isn't much of a correlation here with the greater number of chinchillas owned and doing better on tests. And that's exactly what we would expect, right? Any differences would be based purely on chance, right? But hopefully you can see how if you set it up this way or if you set it up this way, you will display the data differently. So just be careful of that. Something to keep in mind. You can start from a non-zero number in most science classes on the y-axis, but not on the x-axis. All right, so let's go ahead and get to it. So our step one is going to be to figure out our range. So this is a lot of a wall of text, but basically we just want to know our range in the x-axis in the y-axis. And we want to have a range that is outside the bounds of whatever data points we have. So it needs to be lower than 21, and it needs to be 180 or greater, basically. I used to say that you have to go over the value, but it turns out that the College Board for Physics will accept it if you put a data point right on the edge of your graph. So I've come to accept that as well. So let me show you what I'm talking about. What do you think we could write for our x-axis range that would be useful here? Take a stab at it. Well, we could say it could be between 0 and 200. That number would be easily divisible into parts, right? I wouldn't want to pick 199. I mean, I could. It would just make life harder on us. Or I could say 0 and 180, so for a range of 180. I'm going to go ahead and use this 180. Like I was saying, the College Board will accept data points on the edge of graphs. So some people are not comfortable with this. Some people would say you have to go over and go to 200. I've come to accept this. So we're going to go with this. And for the y-axis, think about what would be a reasonable y-axis range to work with. Well, let's include the zero in the y-axis. And if we do that, then a number that would be greater or equal to 273, that would be easily divisible, could be 280, for instance. So let's use that. All right, our second step is to divide the ranges by two to figure out halfway through and to divide them by four for a fourth of the way through and by eight for an eighth of the way through. So let me show you what I'm talking about. We're talking about two different things here. We're talking about our ranges for the x-axis and the y-axis. So for our x-axis range, we know that the total range is 180 units of whatever it is we're dealing with. We divide that by 2, we'll get 90. And if we do a quarter of our total distance across in the x-axis, that would be 45 units. And if we take an eighth of that, that would be 22.5. Now take a moment and think about if we want to go between 0 and 280, what would we do over here for the y-axis? See if you can follow the pattern. 
and figure out what we're going to be doing for the y-axis here. Remember, we're going from 0 through 280. All right, so if we said 280 is our total range that we have to deal with, and halfway through it would be 140 units of whatever it is we're dealing with, and a fourth of the way through would be 70 units, and an eighth of the way through would be 35 units. All right, and next I want to show you how we're going to integrate this with the number of lines we have to work with. So I counted the number of lines we have here. Notice how I'm using most of the space and I'm going to set up my axes, the x-axis and the y-axis, with my upper and lower bounds in terms of my range. So I'm going to go between 0 and 180 up here, and 0 and 280 up here is what we had talked about. So then we could say, well, halfway through, let's think about this. We were saying that 180 divided by 2 is 90 units. That's what we worked on before. So about halfway through is 90 units, right? But you could say, well, how many lines would that be? Because we want to be as close as we can. Well, let's go ahead and count the number of lines. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Half of that would be five lines. So exactly five lines over from our starting point. You're going to make that a 90, whatever the units are. It could be seconds or meters or all kinds of things right here. Similarly, what we're going to do is divide that in half and get a value for a quarter of the way through. So we said before that 180 divided by 4 is 45 units, but what is that in terms of lines? Well, remember, we said this was five lines was halfway across. What do you think would be half of that? What is one half of five? Well, that's going to be 2.5, or you could say 10 lines divided by 4 is also 2.5 lines. So we should go ahead and mark this as 45 right here. Now we also have to do the three-quarter mark, like three-fourths the way through. How do you get that? Well, you can take this value right here, 90, add the 45 to it, and you end up with 135. That should go right here, right? Okay, and let me show you one more thing. This may be enough if your teacher is kind of chill on this. This may work for you. Or you may need to take it one step further. I'm just going to show you how to do this. So you can do this with as fine as granulation as you need. So you can say 180 divided by 8 is equal to 22.5 units. And each of those would be 1.25 lines across. So I went ahead and put in the lines here. This is a little bit hard to draw in my presentation program. So i got to be careful here. It's going to get really messy. So I didn't actually put in the numbers. But if I was doing this on a sheet of paper with more room and the font size was not an issue, then I would write in these numbers as well. This would be 22.5 right here, for instance. All right, now that we've seen the strategy for the x-axis, let's go ahead and apply that to the y-axis. Same sort of thing, 0 and 280. If I count the number of lines I have here, I've got 10. I could have gone to 11. I could have made this 11 and dropped this down here. But 11 would be harder to work with than 10 if you say, well, look at the dead space. The dead space is actually really minimal. This is a good setup for a graph. So going up just 10 is going to be fine. So let's go ahead and do that. Our range again was 280, 0 to 280 that we had to work with. So half of that would be 140. And how many lines would that be? Well, if I have 10 lines to work with, then half of that would be 5 lines up. And if I said, all right, I'm going to go ahead and label that. And then I said, all right, well, what's half of that? What's half half of that? What do you think would be the value here, and where should I put it? Well, we're going to take half of both of these numbers, you could say, or you could take your total and divide it by 4, or however you want to approach it. But half of 140 is 70, and half of 5 is 2.5. So you could say we need another line right here with 70, 2.5 lines up. And we also need to mark our third quarter mark again as well for the y-axis. And so we do that with 210 here. And you could say, how'd you get 210? Well, I took that quarter and I add it with one half. So 70 plus 140 would give me three quarters or 210. So that's how I came up with that. You can also set up the eighths as well. And again, I did that. I showed the work for it, but I... I'm kind of running out of room in terms of font size and so on. So I didn't actually type in the numbers, but I think you get the idea. So this is how you go about doing this, and hopefully this has been helpful. If you have any questions or comments down below, please let me know, and I hope you all have a great day. Take care.